Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Tribal Zoo, and our opponent is playing Blue White Control. So, this is our opening hand double Nakatol, Tarmogoyf, and a Bloodbraid Elf, uh, along with three lands. Uh, pretty happy with that as an opener overall. And uh, we're on the play here as well, which is good for us. So, I'm just going to lead with a Stomping Ground into a Nakatol. Plays Island, we'll play the Sacred Foundry out, and attack for three. Opponent has no response, I'm just going to play another Nakatl. That has a Wall of Omens, which is uh, semi annoying, but we can deal with it here thanks to the Lightning Bolt and all Lightning Helix. Um, so our opponent's going to block, and uh, we can just Lightning Bolt. Kill off the wall of omens, and, uh, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, and that also has the uh, upside of also uh, making our Tarmogoyf that much bigger, because there's now a great uh, yeah creature and uh, instant in the graveyard. So uh, we've got nine points of power on board. Uh, unfortunately, our opponent has a detention sphere, which is uh, pretty good against our double Nacolls, um, and gets rid of those. We've attacked for three here. Uh, didn't find the land to um, get our blood braid going, but we do have a lot of burn, which is pretty nice. Going to cast blood braid here. I could have kept my burn up instead, but um, this kind of works better against counter magic. I feel um, we get into the uh, the dream play of uh, <laughs> of uh, cascading into a mantis rider, which is uh, very nice indeed, and uh, we're going to be able to attack for nine here. We we'll have a Vendillion click, he uses that to get rid of our, um, I think it was, yeah, the Boros Charm, he gets rid of the Boros Charm, we draw into a Tarmogoyf instead, um, and we trades with the Mantis Rider, but we still got six points of power on board. There was Gideon of the Trials, um, and pluses onto Tarmogoyf, which doesn't actually do enough, um, and then concedes. Um, I suppose alternatively he could have got an emblem, but then we could have just killed Gideon uh, fairly easily as well, given our opponent doesn't seem to have anything else. Um, so, yeah, that uh, worked out pretty well. We were just too fast for our opponent um, and had a very aggressive hand and also nicely cascaded into Mantis Rider, which uh, helped a bit as well. Uh, so, yeah, worked out pretty well. Uh, so here we are with sideboards. Um, Against control decks, I like bringing in Lingering Souls, um, as most of those decks are sort of looking at either using mass removal or targeted removal to sort of attrition you your guys. Um, playing like one for one is uh, not great, so Lingering Souls works quite nicely as a way of uh, obviously creating multiple threats, um, flyers that can get over things like Wall of Omens in this particular matchup, and. Um, Obviously, gives you uh, gives you some action if you uh, do get hit by a supreme verdict or some other sort of wrath effect. Um, so uh, yeah, I like lingering souls probably more than I like Mantis Rider. I think um, so. Usually, sideboard out Mantis Riders for lingering souls. Everything else seems fine. Um, we're relatively well set up. We've got the top end, the blood braids, and then we've got lots of nice uh, cheap threats uh, that are probably pretty. Dangerous. Um, we could bring in Thought Seize, but I don't think it's necessary. Really, there's nothing we're particularly frightened of, and it's not like they have any sort of combo win necessarily. So, I think fairly happy with the deck as it's set up, pretty much. Um, bar four, uh, I think bringing in Lingering Souls is uh, is pretty pretty good um, against their sort of attritiony, wrath, and uh, targeted removal. So. Um, that's how I would uh, choose to sideboard in this matchup. Okay, so here we are with game two against blue white control. Uh, so this is our opener. Yeah, not too bad. We've got Lone Lion, Curd Ape, a couple of burn spells, and a Blood Braid. 
this all works out fairly nicely. Probably going to search up. Well, yeah, slightly awkward. We're going to have to search up Sacred Founder, I guess, with this Windswept Heath. So we can cast Curd Ape and Loam Line off of that. And then we've got a basic forest that we can get. Uh, we can use to uh, pump up the. Uh, to. Uh, Curd Ape creatures. Pump these off with Serum Visions. So say we're going to search up Sacred Foundry, then we can play the basic forest. Pump up our Curd Ape. But that's Path. So we're going to search up our other basic land in the deck. Which is a Plains. Uh, I don't know whether we should have a basic mountain in this deck. Um, that's probably my main criticism of the build of the mana base. Um, I don't know if it fits, maybe it doesn't, um, but I think a basic mountain would be useful. We don't actually have that many cards that cost white mana or just white mana, so um, I kind of would appreciate having a basic uh, mountain in the deck, but maybe it doesn't quite fit the mana base. Um, so uh, we end that turn playing Tarmogoyf, who's now a 3-4. But plays Field of Ruin, which actually is a bit concerning for the reasons I've just mentioned. Uh, we don't actually have any basics left now because we drew our basic forest. Um, and our opponent could see us off uh, red mana if he was aware of that. I mean, obviously he's probably not. But if this became a stock deck list, then um, I think possible we could have seen our opponent um, use the field of ruin there to get rid of our sacred foundry and that would have put us in quite a lot of trouble so we draw into hallowed fountain um, and we're just going to blood braid out here and see what happens um, after our time ago we've got hit with a detention sphere hits into a wild nakatl which is nice so we've got like a little army in a can thing going on here, um, so we're going to be able to tap for three. And past the turn, our opponent's got another Serum Visions, no Wrath of any kind. Search for as Canter, um, not looking overly impressive in this circumstance. Um, and uh, here we've got a choice, we can either leave the Bloodbread back or just go for it and see if we can kill our opponent as, food, as fast as possible just in case he's got a Supreme Verdict or whatever. Um, I think I like just playing the Blood Braid Elf uh, and uh, seeing where we get to. Um, so it hits Tribal Flames for four, uh, as we don't have a black source as it stands, um, but it's still pretty good. I'm going to be able to tap for nine here. And Crax gets a Plains, has Path, which he uses on the Nicole. Still going to get to attack for six here, put an opponent down to six. Search for as canter, not ready to flip just yet. Uh, our opponent plays Celestial Connade and then concedes. Um, presumably didn't find the removal that he needed. Um, and uh, that wraps up the game. Um, even if he did have the uh, Supreme Verdict, obviously, notably, we do have uh, a couple of bird spells here. Um, as I said, we actually got slightly stuck on red mana here so we couldn't have killed him next turn um, but we would assume that um, we would be able to win over the next couple of turns uh, if our opponent hadn't conceded anyway um, so uh, yeah worked out pretty well uh, pretty happy with how this mat uh, this uh, deck lines up against um, control decks um, generally seems to be pretty good matchups for us um, as I say we get to put a lot of early pressure on and then blood breath blood uh, bread elf easy for me to say um, he's just really really good against control decks um, obviously because it's very difficult to just uh, counter everything you're doing if you're what you know your top end spell uh, is actually two spells so um, yeah works out pretty well and uh, seems to have a very good control matchup